But yeah, anyways, I, I haven't had a lesson in a very long time. So okay. <laughs> I'm super rusty. And you know what? I've never I've never sort of uh taken taken like a, a a deep sort of look or let's just say like an honest look at 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 blues with somebody. It's something that I just sort of stumble sort of through, right? So yeah. Uh, I've 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 studied classical guitar, I studied jazz for a bit, um, but to actually sit down and 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 vibe off of a blues, I I, I always approached it from a more analytical, yeah, kind of approach, right? Yeah. So, so sort of um, feel thing is something I'm almost I'm almost nervous about this because it's like man I don't know I don't even know if I have the <laughs> I don't know if I have the mojo for this right now, but. Uh, but that's okay. I just woke up, so yeah, maybe, yeah, exactly. maybe that'll work. Maybe that'll work for well, me. Honestly, man, the biggest thing about learning blues guitar specifically is is listening to it a lot. And and you know, if you immerse yourself in it, you listen to what the uh, the legends were doing. You know, sure. I always go back to BB King as like my number one example. Yeah. If you listen to what he was doing, and and you just take ideas and and um, phrasing from him, yeah, then your own emotion will come through that, you know, so it can start out as technical and it can evolve to being sure uh, more felt, you know? Yeah. Well, it's kind of like, I guess, like the, 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 the phrasing you can, you can sort of put emotion into it. And if you're like, are you learning this stuff by, are, you're learning it by ear, I assume. Uh, I learned everything by ear. Yeah. yeah. Which is like that deeper connection to the, like the language of music. Right. Instead of just, well, yeah. Yeah. Pros and cons, though, right? Because oh, like, sure. you're classically trained, and and you can probably read music and know the names of every chord you're playing. Once upon um, a time. <laughs> well, well, I came at it totally the opposite direction by pressing rewind a million times. Sure. So I learned what you know got my guitar to sound the same as their guitar, or as close as I could. And um, so, in that sense, I think there there's what's the benefit to that is that I developed my ear really well. Right. And I have pretty good ears when it comes to single note lead stuff, especially. Um, but where I'm lacking is, you know, if I'm if I'm playing a chord and someone says, what chord is that? Then right. I can't necessarily tell them exactly what it is. Sometimes I can. A lot of the time I can. But a lot of the time I can't. So. Right. But there are pros and cons to it, man. I mean, you, you know, all kinds of things on the guitar that I don't know and will never know and vice versa. And, you know, we just have to trade yeah. and, um, and see what we can come up with. Sure, sure. But I mean, it's almost like, uh, man, it's almost like, like how there's uh, an emotional intelligence. There's people who can kind of get right to the core of a feeling. Yeah. Right. And, and, and I like when I talk to people, even though I went through more of, um, you know, here's, here's your scale, here's your chord, here's your arpeggio sort of thing. This is why they work. If you, if you, tune into it with your ear and i always try and convince them it's like do as i say not as i do or That's did right, i guess yeah. Yeah. uh you know you tune into that you, you you can really get into the the sort of heart of your emotions and 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 sort of get that stuff out there uh yeah, like absolutely. connect with it a little bit more whereas if it's if it's just like cold cold and staring at you like an a major scale just staring at you and you know you got the little metronome tick talking it it sort of it does sort of lose something, do you know what I mean? So yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, I, I think it's a journey though. Like, because uh, when I think of when I first started playing guitar, even though I was sitting down and playing blues guitar riffs with whether it was BB King or Stevie Ray Vaughan, um, I was just mimicking physical stuff myself. You know, I was seeing it on a video or I was hearing it, and sure. I was like, here's where you know I think it is. And I was just learning how to physically play it. Well, that doesn't mean I was feeling every moment of it, right? And then. As time goes on, the more you listen to it, the more you play it, the more you can put your own spin right. on it, your own emotion into it. And um, I mean, when it comes to scales, it's like, you know, you mentioned just <laughs> sitting there looking at an A major scale. Well, you know, there are, there's a lot of magic in there if you, oh, for of, sure. you know, extract it, right? Oh, so, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. But like uh, sort of the way it was shown to me is kind of like, you know, uh, a, 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 say a flat seven interval. I don't want to throw things totally out there and get like theoretical and stuff but like the way it was shown to me is like oh it sounds like this song and right. we were just we memorized it like in a chart like like you know um, a minor second sounds like the theme from jaws and 
this sounds like this and this sounds like that, right? It's like kind of getting us halfway between, you know, this is a theory class and, you know, what does it actually make you feel? And it was hard to make that, at first it was hard to make that connection. Like, you know, that interval is sort of uh, looming and, yeah. and sort of traumatizing, but it is because of the connection to the actual movie, right? right. So like, like that, the, the flat seven and all these intervals, they, they have certain feels, but maybe it comes from like a lick that you learned or um, f for me especially, and a lot of people I talk to, it's like the time you listen to it the first time. Yeah. So, so like, you know, I always say like music is the, the record button to your, to your life. You know, so yes, yes. If, if you were if you were listening to something, uh, say you're 18 in the summer, you're going to remember that track for the rest of your life. It's going to take you back to yeah. to that sort of moment. And it's sometimes like smelling that certain kind of baking and you go, that's right. That's my grandma's house. That's you know, right. It's, like, it's just like everything yeah. starts firing. Right. Yeah. And and once again, I still feel like um, having that connection with the ear is a little bit better. I, like, I think they arrive at the same thing, right? Like, if I know, ooh, if I reach for this note at this interval, I'm going to get this response. Sure, that's fine. But if you can just do it as an intuition, yeah, that's like uh, you're just connected a little closer to the, yeah. to the source. Yeah, do, you, do you know what I mean? It's not like yeah. uh, different degrees of, of calculations. You yeah, know, you're, right. you're running the numbers in front. You're <laughs> your audience is watching you, but, you know, you <laughs> yeah. got all these numbers flying. <laughs> in front of your eyes trying to figure out how to emote um yeah. but anyways you were saying bb king so bb king like i i i hate to say it but all i know of bb king i i've, I've seen him play I, wa I i watched him play with Derek trucks and susan tedeschi um and i think i saw him before as well and he's he's absolutely amazing on feel and just like hitting a note just perfectly. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I don't know very much beyond the experience of seeing him live, right? So oh, you saw him live with them? Yes. Oh, wow. Where was that? I was at Blues Fest. Oh, really? Cool. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. If yeah. I misremember, I'm going to feel really silly. But what I remember is he was very old at that, at that point. Yeah. And they were doing a lot of the playing and he was doing a lot of talking. Uh, and yeah, then yeah. he would play a little bit, and it was just magical. But there yeah. was this sort of sadness to it where you, you get, like, these little gems of something. And then Derek Trucks, who's a phenomenal guitar player, uh, one, of, one of my favorites, uh, you know, will take it away. And it's like, man, I want to hear B.B. King, but he's, you know, he's just not up, up to it, I guess, right now, you know. But he just kind of yeah. sit there and, and sort of riff on things. So, um but his playing, okay, so like, uh, I've had students bring it up before. They're, they'll say something like, you know, they'll play their regular pentatonic, and then they call this the BB King box. I've always heard that called that, and I don't know if that's... Like, what's, up, what's up you? in... You're in A, right? I'm in A, A minor, yeah. So, so, so I'm just gonna flip it down here to, to give yeah, sure. an explanation on that. Sure. So if you're if you're in the key of A, yeah. um, in the blues world, we would call this being in the A box. Okay, so I'm okay. in the A box here, and then I take that root note of A, find it on the B string. Here oh, it is. Yep. And then now I'm in the Albert King box. Ah. Which is where that kind of riff comes from, which you've heard Stevie Ray Vaughan play. Of times, course, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, Stevie was listening to Albert King, and he just took it and got more and more, you know, aggressive with it, kind of thing with the raking, because because uh, Albert King didn't rake like that. He right. His fingers. Um, so there's, I mean, there's a bunch to do in the Albert King box, which I'm sure we'll get to. But uh, to me, the BB King box is one more box up from that, where your first finger is on the root note, and that's where you get that BB King vibrato. Oh, okay. And then so you would do riffs like... That's the BB King box, and this is the Albert King box. Oh. And then back down here to the 
so, so to speak. okay, so I know this in position, so I'm, 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 I'm sorry if I'm, because I learned the pentatonic in positions here, and I don't, yeah. <laughs> I don't use it like this, it's kind of cool, so um, that, that scale, the, the BB King box is uh, this one, in A, so, so what, what position do you call that? Because now you're teaching. Oh, me. okay. So like, here's the thing, <laughs> man. I feel like I have to change what like what the position is depending on who I'm talking to, right? Okay. So if it's like super formal, you're just talking about like what fret you're at. So you're at the right. tenth fret. That's the position. Okay. And then you say okay. what? Then you say what actual scale you're in. So it's it's okay. tenth position, but I'm playing the A minor pentatonic. Okay. And that gives you all the information to do that gotcha, little bit. Gotcha. But yeah. like even just saying like the BB King box, 10th mm -hmm. fret conveys the same information to, yeah. To, yeah. to somebody, sure. right? Yeah. Um, actually, I would say it conveys a little bit more information because it's, it's very specific to his sound. So like um, one of the interesting things with um, just sort of playing guitar, I guess, is like the tendency for, for me and, and most, most people that I talk to and and uh, teach is like you have say in a pentatonic scale you have two notes on uh, like each string right two notes per string the tendency is to yank or really rake on the higher note and less on that one and i always throw it out there but i don't really do it a lot it's kind of fun <laughs> airing my dirty laundry here with with someone else it's like i tell people i tell people hey man if you want to mix it up just play in like position three or something like play that pentatonic scale mm -hmm. somewhere else and yeah. you're going to bend a note that you're not used to yeah. bending and you're going to get something cool mm -hmm. and then as you're saying oh the bb king <laughs> that's the albert king here the bb king's here i'm i'm immediately having an anxiety attack going like <laughs> wait what's the <laughs> what is that pattern what what scale am i in geez i I like half prepared. I half prepared for playing this little lick there, and it's like, oh no, oh no, I don't no, have a lick no. there. I mean, <laughs> I, I don't. I mean, the thing is, is I only know these things in terms of the way I've had the conversations with blues sure. guitar players, mm -hmm. or heard them, or heard them explained. And what's crazy about blues is that I mean, it's been around for such a long time, and it developed in different ways in different uh, regions of the United States. Yep. So. In different parts of the U.S., they refer to things differently. So, um, you know, one example, just in terms of ch terminology, mm -hmm. this um, shuffle here. You know, yep. you've heard Stevie Ray go and make it his own thing, but really, it's just a blue shuffle or this. You know, sure. when it comes to this one, now that's craziness because I've heard that referred to as uh, a Jimmy Reed shuffle. Okay, yep. Which is how Kim Wilson from the Fabulous Thunderbirds used to say it to me, play a Jimmy Reed shuffle. Okay, is that? Or you'd call it a, a spread shuffle. Okay. Um, because, you know, when you get to the five, you end up spreading right. your fingers. I, I assume that's where it <laughs> sure. comes from. And then I've heard the guys from New England. So Kim kind of grew up in uh, playing blues anyway in, in Texas, hmm. along with Jimmy Vaughn and all those guys, and and Stevie and everyone. So, but then in New England, where Roomful of Blues is from, and and Duke Robler and guys like that, they call it a march. So oh. they're totally different regions in the U.S. and they all have different terminology for the exact same thing. So right. I've been on stage with various players like that, and they say, "Play a blah blah blah," and I'm like what does that mean? <laughs> and then they start playing it and I go, Oh, that's what you're going to call that. Thing? Right. Okay, cool. And it's just because there's so much history there, right? That, that sure. there are so many different ways of talking about it. And each region had a connection with different uh, legendary players from the past. So, right. Uh, and then you would never hear BB King play a song like that, for example. You right. Know, it's like more of a Chicago uh, thing rather than a, a Mississippi thing. So, Oh, okay. And, and that's, and that's more because, you know, in the blues world, as soon as you start playing a, a certain type of rhythm, you can associate to certain blues artists. Mm -hmm. And if you play a different one, it's like, oh, so these guys would play it like this. These guys would play it like that. You know, when you think of a slow blues, people talk about, oh, I'm learning how to play a slow blues. Well, 
what kind of slow blues are you learning how to play? Is oh. it a Muddy Water slow blues? Is it a T-Bone Walker slow blues? Okay. And and to me, those are like the two worlds right there. You say either you're in the T-Bone, B.B. King, Junior Parker uh, world of slow blues, or mm-hmm. you're in the Muddy Waters, Howlin' Wolf. Um, okay. You know, whatever just a different kind of slow blues a different vibe they don't use the same chords they use the same form it's still a 12 bar form yep but they don't use the same chords and voicings and and feel at all okay it's it's uh you would almost call the t-bone bb stuff uptown blues okay and you'd call the muddy hollow wolf stuff like low down blues so it's like uptown and low down are okay. kind of one way of, of describing it and, and you can feel the difference so right um like one, I'll just give you a quick example sure, sure. of that. Sorry, I'm a little shaky when I'm moving this thing around. That's okay. So for a T-bone kind of BB slow blues, now let's keep in mind, BB says he didn't play any chords, though <laughs> he definitely played chords, but that's right. besides the point. So um, <laughs> T-bone would do this. If we're, we're in B flat here. You know? Okay. So it's like this. Whereas, and that you, you feel, you know, it's, it's kind of... It's got a majoriness to it because it's got that major third in the chord. We're in mm-hmm. B flat, and it's you know, it's a ninth chord, but it's you know, it's still got a major third in it. Yeah. And it, it has a feel to it, whereas Muddy, they were playing stuff like this. positive and hopeful and the other one feels just like low down yeah 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 and, uh, yeah so smoky smoky thing. room like is yeah, is the yeah. vibe smoky yeah. room uh bourbon kind of thing mm-hmm. um so so i mean it's it's probably a silly question but i'll throw it out there anyways is uh do particular artists like do they subscribe to one versus the other and just naysay like are there examples of that or like for you, do you do you play uh, both of those styles, all the styles? You bring it all in, or are you are you using it for different vibes, or like? Well, yeah, both of the last thing you last okay. things you just said. Yes, I yeah. use them all, and yes, different vibes, okay. and yes, there are players who only do one. Right. Um, and, and that's that's for multiple reasons. I mean, like. Maybe you're a guy that they grew up and, and you love BB King and T-Bone Walker, but you're not that big of a fan of Muddy and, and Wolf, and sure. that's fine. So you're going to play all the BB kind of style stuff and none of the others. And then there are guys who do the opposite. So um, right. it's kind of it's kind of wild in the blues world because there are some bands that kind of cover a little bit of everything with the, some of the jazzy blues, some of the um, Delta blues, some yep. of the Chicago blues, Texas blues. I mean, they all have different voices and, and different um, – Okay. feels um and then there are some bands who subscribe to one thing and one thing only mm-hmm. and uh, there are several bands that just do chicago blues okay and it is chicago to the point of like no return like they know what muddy waters ate for breakfast the day he recorded right. Right. Gucci man you know what yeah, I mean? yeah yeah like <laughs> like they're that serious about it and they live that life and they live in that world of blues and it's this much of the blues and that's great man i mean they some yeah. of them do a really Beautiful, fantastic job. They write original material that sounds exactly like Chess Records in 1957. Mm-hmm. You know, that's beautiful. Um, I, I personally prefer playing the, the aspects of blues that I love from all over the spectrum. You know, I love the jazzy side of blues. I love the lowdown side of blues, the harmonica stuff, the horn stuff, the organ stuff. You know, I, I love it all. So right. Um, right, right. I'm kind of, not to say I'm a jack of all trades because I certainly don't have them all perfected or even close. Sure. It's a lifetime of work. Of, of course. Um, but but I do dabble in them all because there are things about all those subgenres, we would call them, mm. uh, that I really love. Right, right. So yeah. so if someone was uh, say starting out and they, they didn't yeah. they didn't know. They just didn't know. They just like the blues. Like in, in big capital letters. I just I just yeah. like the blues. Yeah. Um where whereabouts would would you say to start? Like what's a what's a good starting spot for uh maybe a, a, a riff? Oh, that's a great question, man. Yeah, um, yeah. So in terms of riffs, I, I mean, I automatically think of 
B.B. King. I mean, like I said in the beginning, I say B.B. King because to me, he wrote the book, so to speak, on single note blues guitar. Okay. And, um, you know, people don't realize this, but he literally invented the vibrato on the guitar with his fingers. And what he was trying to do was get the sound of a slide. Okay. And, you know, his, his cousin or uncle, Buka White, played slide and he wanted to get that sound. So he went like that with the string to make it sound like he was vibrating. Right. And then all of a sudden, you know, it became everybody since then has done it like that, you know. Right, um, right. From Slash on down, you know, sure. to Van Halen. You of name course, it. of um, course. <laughs> so so BB's kind of the guy for single note blues guitar. I mean, he wasn't the first to solo on the guitar by any means. Mm. There, were, there were players before him. But in terms of the way to do it like it like we experience it nowadays it's it's all comes from bb and t-bone right and um i'll throw in a quick little story here about sure one time when i was playing at uh, buddy guys club in chicago i came off stage the security guard came up and said come over here buddy wants to talk to you before he leaves <laughs> said, all right i go over it and um and buddy said oh man i like the way you play i like the way you play that bb king stuff and i said oh thank you i i, I tried to throw in some some buddy guy in there too <laughs> And here I am talking to Buddy Guy, who influenced Jimi Hendrix. Right. If you don't know who Buddy Guy is, and you're watching this, you need to go and research Buddy Guy because there's sure. footage of Hendrix watching Buddy Guy play the guitar. <laughs> okay. Um, so if you don't know who he is, you need to know. And um, and I said so. I said that out of respect, and also I legitimately tried playing some Buddy riffs so that he would like take notice. Sure. While I was on yeah, of course. <laughs> and he said he said this to me, and I'll never forget. He said, "It's all BB and T Bone." Mm. And I thought, well, that's that's really humble of him to say that. But then as the, the years passed, I thought about that more and more. And, and I'll give you an example. Um, Buddy Guy does this riff like this. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting. Uh, actually, yeah, you look like you're going to go play it. Yeah. So grab the high E at the same time. Oh, okay. And then the bottom notes are just. Yep. And then do the high at the same time. And then you can slide up that third finger or hammer it on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And, and then, you know, you, you hear Stevie Ray do that on, on um, Cold Shot, among other songs. And, uh, and to me, that's a Buddy Guy riff. Okay. And so I thought, oh, Buddy's just being humble. But as I thought about it, you know, I thought, oh, he's just being humble. And then I remember hearing a T-Bone Walker song. It was probably like eight or nine months later. And T-Bone's soloing away, and he's just going, you know, you know, kind of yeah. typical T-Bone stuff. And then he goes, okay. he did it for like one second. Like, like, <laughs> like a second he did had both strings. Yeah. And I realized that's what Buddy means by that. He, Buddy took that from... T-Bone Walker and just like put it on crack basically and like sure. on speed and and it grew into this huge thing where he does it for like 12 bars 24 bars sometimes sure um so he wasn't being modest he was serious it comes from T-Bone Walker and BB King and BB huh. BB listened to T-Bone so right. you could say it all comes from T-Bone but T-Bone didn't play a vibrato the way that BB does I see so or bend the way he does you know and or did and mm -hmm. um and that's why it really does go back to those two guys so if you're getting into blues guitar you absolutely have to listen to t-bone walker and bb king but you should also go and listen to howlin wolf who has hubert sumlin on guitar and, and that's where the black keys get a ton of their riffs mm -hmm. from and um and keith Rich it's keith richard's favorite guitar player you know guys like that right. Right. um listen to muddy waters listen to howlin wolf and, and discover for yourself what moves you as a listener because to me, there's nothing more important. If you if it moves you, gravitate towards it. What else matters? Yeah, you know, of like, course. That, that's that's it. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that uh, entirely, entirely. Yeah. Um, so, with um, with one of those, say say we pick a riff, there there's usually a style of uh, soloing that's behind it, or the artist will have their own style too. But like, let's yeah. say. Let's say you know back to BB King. You know he he had a particular voice yeah. um, for for lead guitar, and he had a particular sort of gravitation towards a a riff. Is there sort of like a 
is there a, a pairing here that we could talk about? Like, a, you know, like how they have a yeah. food and drink pairing. One, one really <laughs> marries well with the other. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> I mean, when I think about um, a riff, like when I'm teaching, I always start with very specific riffs okay. all over the fretboard. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll go through some of those now because sure. once you learn those, and, and I'll, I'll kind of disclaimer this by saying, you know, as I mentioned, I'm self-taught, so I don't know... Um, I don't know how other people learn. I don't know how you ever get from learning a scale to learning riffs in a scale. Like that idea is just, I, I tried it, man. I mean, yeah. I, I was taught a scale. Here's the blues scale. Here's the major pentatonic scale or minor, whatever it was. Yeah. And, and I, I played the scale and I was like, great. So I know how to play this thing up and down, but like, yeah. how do I come up with riffs in this? Oh, just hit any of the notes. They all work. It's like, that's ridiculous. Like, <laughs> you know how hard that is to come up with like awesome sounding riffs with <laughs> random notes when you've never soloed in your life. Yeah. 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 Kind well, of, kind it, of asking a lot. You're, no, you're right. It's like, it's like saying here, here's all the great works of, uh, of English literature. Ready? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, V. If you could just put it together. Uh, you, you'll be you're set. good. <laughs> you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and on this, by the same token, here are a bunch of ingredients. Make me, you know, yeah, make me yeah. the, the most amazing <laughs> meal. That's right. I've ever had. That's it's right. It's all right there. What's wrong with you? Go. Yeah, come um, on. Okay, so, so the way I learned was riff by riff. Okay. okay. And so I call it the riff library. Okay. And if you build your riff library up enough and you have riffs all over the guitar, mm -hmm. They all start to, you know, come together sure. and, and flow together in, yeah, a, yeah. in a way that makes sense. Okay. So in, in the blues world, I think it's important to learn how to play, uh, let's say, like a basic blues shuffle. All right. Okay. So 12 bar form, let's say we're in the key of A. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'd love to go into rhythm stuff too, uh, but maybe we can do that a little bit afterwards. Sure. Um, but to, to get on the uh, riff part here anyway. What I think is important is learning a few riffs in the main box, a mm -hmm. few riffs in the Albert King box, a few riffs in the BB King box, and okay. then you just start to go between them. Okay. Okay. Yep. So the first one I would do is this. Now I call that the G, G string bend because you're starting on the G string. Okay. And it's a very slight bend. It's not a full step. It's uh, it's kind of. It's just about a half step bend. Right. And it can it can be lower, but it can't be higher. <laughs> okay. So, okay. There, I get you. Yeah. Oh. And and so instead of having them run together like that, you want them all to be separated. Like oh, okay. okay. And so what I'm doing is I'm kind of hopping my finger back and forth there. Yeah. Okay. So breaking them up. Yeah, and then try to do it so that they're less staccato and a little closer together, but not running into each other. Right, I get it. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's great. tricky. That's great. It's tricky to think about. It's clean, though. <laughs> that, was, that was good. It was nice and clean. And so where that riff falls, um, it can fall pretty much anywhere, but where I think it is most effective is on beats four and a one. Okay. okay. So you'd go one, two, three, four, and then one, two, ah. three, four, and then one, two, three. And then it's going to switch to, to the four chord. There's the four. Ah. And this is an anywhere riff, as I call it. So it can go over the one, the four, or the five. Sure. Right? And since we're in the key of A here, mm -hmm. that means A, D, or E. That's mm -hmm. one, four, five. Yep. Um, so, so of course, it can fall on one and a two, two and a three, three and a four, or four and a one. Okay. Right? Any of those are technically acceptable, but what I like about it on four and a one is if you play it there, then this note lands on the, the when the chord changes. Yes. Which is which is sweet. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, I know you know all this. I'm just kind of saying it for whoever's. No, watching. no. I. <laughs> it it it's nice to go over this though, honestly. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's good. Okay. Yeah. So, so the next one would be this. And okay. that's a classic BB King intro. Yep. And that's a full step bend there. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. And okay. it's a very majory riff for sure. Whereas this one is yeah. not as majory sounding. So, um, so quick, ahead. sorry, I, 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 I do get distracted. Um, yeah. So you were playing minor and then you were playing major. 
And you can do, yes. you could do both. It's fair game. Yes, it's fair game yeah. in this in this sort of uh, genre, right? Yeah, but you know what? That, this is a crazy thing about the major minor world of blues guitar, is you can, but you can't always. Oh, okay. And, and and the reason why I say that is because it's got to represent the feel of the song, right? If you're playing a low down sounding rhythm like. <laughs> Right, mm -hmm. then you can't be super major. You can't be <laughs> right, right, right. Like that's a little. It's a little much. Like it just. It sounds like you don't actually know the language. Sure. So you're you're using words, but they're kind of all over the place, and your your mm -hmm. grammar is a disaster, and your yeah. punctuation makes no sense. That's so, right. So that's where understanding what works and doesn't work in blues guitar is. Yeah. Um, it comes from experience, but there are also some kind of rules to it, right? Right. Whereas if you had a um, a rhythm that was like doing something really majory, like sure, yeah, yeah. you know, you're hitting the major third and, and the six in there. Yep. Then maybe then if you're playing the really majory riffs, then then they work well together. Sure. But if you're going super majory and then kind of to the right. minor scale stuff, it, it just doesn't it doesn't jive. Right. Right. It, well, um, it's kind of like I guess it's sort of. And I mean, I'm 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 kind of projecting here because I I don't know much about it, but like I know there's there's some basis in call and response, mm -hmm. and you know, and maybe this is a stretch, but if like the rhythm is calling out, this is a smoky bar room, yeah, bourbon yeah. soaked, and yeah. then you know your your sunshine and rainbows, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> you're not you're not speaking the same language, right? That's we're not exactly we're not right. jiving anymore, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so, interesting. So going back to the BB riff, those first two riffs are riffs that BB would have played, okay? Yeah. And especially in his early days. Now, you know, we talked about the BB box, but really BB King played in like all of the boxes. Sure. Um, now, yeah, so so it's kind of pushing boundaries on both sides of the, the major minor thing, but not to the point where it sounds super one way or super the other way. Okay. You could play minor blues riffs over a major blues song, yep. and it would it would be fine. Sure. Right. Yeah. But if you go too far into minor world, then it's like, dude, this isn't a minor blues. This right. is still a blues song that is technically either major or some of the time it, it doesn't really it doesn't really say whether it's major or minor. Like when it's something like this, mm -hmm. uh, like those sure. are all notes that would fit in either Both. major or minor. Yeah. Um, so if you approach that like. Let me think. Okay. And that sounds really minor -y, Right. Know, and, you can, and you're going. And that's yeah, like, yeah. okay, it's, it's obviously a minor blues at that point. So yeah, yeah. You, and then if you do this, you can go. Yep. incorporated both major and minor style riffs sure um but it kind of colors it a certain it kind of colors it towards being majory and a bit ambiguous you know okay. at the same time um are you are yeah. you sometimes doing that like because you're heading say to like you were heading towards the four chord there yeah and maybe that's like um it, it, it's it's more speaking like the four chord kind of vibe like when you do that run like maybe that's why that's happening I don't know. Like that's the thing. Yeah, so like no, no, I just throw that out there. Question. No, yeah. totally fair question. Yeah. And, and that's that's where it gets back to learning it by scales and, and sure. being correct versus right. like all I know is I'm playing riffs that work right under the four chord. Okay. Know? And so you always kind of have to boil it back to like the the lowest common denominator, which sure. in this case is picture BB King learning how to play blues guitar. Right. Um He's just listening. He doesn't yeah. have books. He doesn't have anyone sitting down with him and showing him scales. Mm -hmm. He's like, this works, this works, this works. Ooh, that one doesn't work. And then you're never going to hear him play it again. Sure. So he's already kind of filtered out the the stuff that doesn't work. Right. Um, and and all he's left for us is like the BB King approved riff. So like <laughs> he played it, it's approved. Here That's it is. Right. And now off you go. <laughs> I like so, that. Yeah. So of those two riffs I mentioned, I feel like both of those, uh, this one, that's right. Yep. And 
Yep. To me, those are both kind of call riffs. And if you think of blues like a language, yep. then what you have is, you know, those both kind of have a comma or a dot, dot, dot after them, right? Um, mm -hmm. But they, they need a response at some point because if you leave everything hanging, then the listener is like up here all the time. You need to bring them back to, sure. you know, reality or whatever you, whatever yeah, you yeah. want to call it. And so a good response riff to that, those is something like this. Very simple. And I'm just rolling my finger again. Mm -hmm. And then on, yeah. And on the G, what I do sometimes is without even noticing it. And this, this is something that years ago, a student said, Hey, wait a minute, you're bending that. No. And I was like, oh. no, I'm not. And I said, yes, you are. And it turns out I was. Yeah. And I was going like this. <laughs> A little. So at the very end. And like, I don't even, I didn't learn how to do that. It just came out of me. And, and <laughs> it came out of me because that's probably what I heard other guys doing, you know? Sure. Um, so to me, that's a good response riff. And when you have those together, now you have, now you have a, um, a situation like this. So I'll use just those riffs. Okay. Okay. And I'm going back to the rhythm just to show where we are. But if anyone's watching this, don't feel the need to have to play rhythm behind yourself. It could be a loop pedal, it could be a jam tracks, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So here it is. One, two, three. <laughs> Okay, right? cool. So, so I, I was kind of going, um, if we call them ABC, I yep. was kind of going A, C, B, C, blah, 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 kind sure. of back and forth, like the call, the response, a different call, the same response. Yeah. But you can do it in any order you want. That was just what I happened to play that time. Yeah. So, like, I noticed on the turnaround, right? Because you, you're only getting one shot at like the five chord, the four chord. Uh, you were doing the call over and over yeah. again. But yeah. like that, that to me, the vibe that I was getting was like an elastic band being pulled and yeah, like more yeah, and more yeah. tension kind of built. Yes. Perfect. And, and then you gave, you gave that sort of result, but it was right back on the, the, the head of it, like the, the, yeah. the, the top. Right. Yeah. Uh, and I really, I really dug that. I, I never thought about doing something like that where it, like, I know like in the classical world, I think it's called like ostinato or something. You just play this, you play the thing. I just say you play it stubbornly. So like okay. the, uh, uh, if you did that over the four chord and the five chord and like every yeah. single time yeah. it came up, uh, yeah. that's like that stubborn sort of playing, but that okay. stubbornness does cause that tension, which is so yes. nice. Um, and then you said the, the response to that is, uh, uh, yeah. but like the bend was a little bit later sort and of thing. Very, and even less than that, I, I tell my students, bend it with your mind and not your fingers. <laughs> use the, use the force, like not even, that's not right, even the quarter right. step. Don't, don't. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. um, and then you had, you yeah. had that one, Yeah. but that one can, you can respond to it the same, couldn't you? Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. But you could, you could, you probably have a whole bunch of responses for them. Uh, well, so. and the other thing is you can use the response as the call. Yeah, sure. <laughs> that makes sure. sense. I mean, you can start a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, you can go any way you want with it, and, and it, it feels differently no matter how you play it. So. Right. I remember a guitar lesson. It was in like a Guitar World magazine in the 90s. It was like you give, you give the lick uh, like a sentence. Okay. Or you give it like a caricature, like oh. this lick. This lick is like Pokey from Gumby and Pokey. Or okay. this one is I know it's hard, or I know I know things are rough, kind of thing. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, um, man, I forget where I heard this from though. Oh no, I think it was Scott Henderson. I think it was Scott okay. Henderson. So right. uh, who's like you know like a fusion guy, but I think he was teaching like a blues lick, where. You know, he's like, I know it's rough, and then he plays the lick, and then the the behind him is the backing track, and he's like, right. man, I know it's rough, man, and he says it again and plays the lick, and he's like, man, 
It's not getting any better. And then he does something else. And and okay. and it, it gives you like a little character. Like it, it lets you sort of relate to it if you don't necessarily rate, relate to it in the moment. Yeah, yeah, it's just yeah, like, yeah, oh, here's cool. a line. Okay, I'll just study it for a week. But, yeah. you know, when he said it like that, it's like, oh, okay, wait. No, I can kind of hear yeah. what, he, what he means by that. Right? Yeah. Like when you said this, uh, this riff is more hopeful. It's like yeah, there's a yeah. little bit of that. And when you can get into that, it sort of allows you to, you know, if we're, if we're treating these licks as like a palette of colors or tools in a toolbox, it's like, well, we get to this point in this shuffle or this, this, and this is the tool that I'm going to use or this is the color I'm going to paint with sort of yeah. thing. And, and I, think, I think language is sort of important. Like when you and I are talking and giving it some sort of extra sort of meaning and it doesn't have to be yeah. theoretical it could just yeah, exactly. be exactly. like this is yeah. this is a hopeful sound it yeah. gives you it gives you a, a sort of a color that you can attach to that like oh yeah i'm gonna use that right and then yeah. maybe you get a collection of hopeful sounds and a collection of down and out sounds or oh, whatever absolutely. sounds absolutely yeah that no right. that nails it man that's, yeah that's yeah way of looking at it. so so like when you play off the five chord so like the five chord was always like uh anything goes kind of thing in, yeah. in like the little jazz that I studied it was like you're you're free to be a little bit more wild okay. on the five chord um are there any like outside uh, this is sort of going against what we we're talking about right now but are, are there any outside sort of riffs that you do over a five chord or is it more like just driving that sort of tension through I mean well, 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 the driving the tension through that. I mean, I was thinking about it as we were as we were talking, and yeah. like the way I did that over the five, I've literally never done that before. I've never done it showing a student. I've never okay. done that <laughs> at, at a gig. I just did it today. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. So it, it was not predetermined. I mean, the other part, I see. Go, the call and response was predetermined, mm -hmm. um, and I've done that many times as an example, but mm -hmm. I've never done that over the five that way. Right. And and I guess that in itself is kind of the definition of improvising. Like, right. I improvised it today, sure. June first, that way. You know I like what I mean? that. Like, yeah. And that's the whole purpose of improvising is that you've never played it that way before. Yeah. Um, well, it's uh, it's feeling out loud. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. So I guess so. I was feeling that elastic bend. <laughs> nice. Like you said. Um, so like outside it. riffs. I mean, when I think of outside, I don't think of blues. I think of jazz. Okay. Um, I think of Coltrane. I think of Charlie Parker. I think of you know Miles Davis. I don't think about um, I don't think of a blues guitar players playing outside, even though sure. plenty of them do. Okay. Um, and when I say playing them do, I mean playing them do now. There weren't a lot of guys back in the day, you know, when I think of all my favorite blues guitar players, they didn't play outside. Right. Um, but then again, I say this, and now as I'm saying it, I'm thinking, <laughs> well, I'm speaking to someone who hasn't studied blues like I have, and to you, maybe some of these riffs sound totally outside on the five. <laughs> yeah. You know, to me, they sound inside. <laughs> right, I, mean, I get it. I so, get it. So it's kind of it's a perspective thing. Um, sure. I mean, over the five chord, if we're in A, then then, you know, you can outline the five. You can really outline it and do something like. Oh. And then, and then a turn around. You know what I mean? Sure. Or you can go. And so on. Okay, uh, so you're, like you're playing, you're, you're playing the top of that E chord. Oh, when you, when you did that? there you go. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I guess that's what I'm doing. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay, so like, yeah. Uh, so I get that. That that actually brings me to another point. So like, okay. um, and and and, like I I, I sort of got the answer to this, which is um, and it's going to sound like I'm sort of regressing here and and bringing up uh, old questions, but like the. The sort of learning the 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 voice, the 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 riffs, the licks, all that sort of stuff, and then learning them in the different um, boxes, mm -hmm. very very important. One of the things that I always did in the blues, and I'm just once again airing out my dirty laundry, is like if I had a cool lick in like that first box, right, and we yeah. switched to D, and I yeah. didn't have a cool lick, mm -hmm. but I had that last cool lick, I would just yeah. move it all the way up to. <laughs> to D. So if okay, we did this that, this is important. This is super important that uh, you're mentioning this. Okay. Actually. Okay. Uh, and I'm so glad you did because that I need to write this down. This is one <laughs> of the things that I I need to explain like out of the gate. Um, 
you can do that. Yeah. Sometimes. Sure. But mostly you can't do that. Right. I mean, you can, and that this is where it's crazy about blues because it's like, is something musically correct? Yes. Should you do it in blues? Definitely not. You right. Know what I mean? <laughs> and, and so this is one of those things that I, I kind of, okay, here's a better way of saying it. B.B. Mm-hmm. King would never do that. Okay. Tebow Walker would never do that. Sure. Albert King would never do that. Okay. Muddy, Hubert Sumlin, these guys would never do that. Right. Um, but you hear it all the time. And it's usually by people who are, who are not well-schooled in blues because they say to themselves, well, if I was in A and I did the riff, then yeah. when I'm on the four, which is D, I can do it here. Yeah. And you can... Uh, and as I'm doing that, it almost sounds like a bit of an Otis Rush thing over a minor blues. Yeah. Um, but but I, I, I just caution against it. Sure. In the sense that, you know, what's way cooler is just stay where you were. Just right. Just play it down there and don't worry about the chords moving underneath it. The right. four moves underneath it, the five moves underneath it. Stay right where you were, you know, be creative in that zone. Um, yeah. However, I, I, I want to kind of, sorry to cut you off. I want to no, no. keep keep that idea flowing for a second and say that, you know, you can play a riff over the five, four, and one mm-hmm. the same way each time. And that works again. Sometimes it depends on the riff though. You know, right. right. Like if you were, if you're going nuts on this, and then the five comes. Right. Sorry, I'm playing sloppy. Okay. And, then, and you do that, then that works. Or right. Then you know it, it can work for sure. It's just it's just not something that I think um, is a good way of thinking of it. It's almost like it should be way afterthought and concentrate on on building your riffs and your boxes first. Right. Right. And like the focus on the phrasing instead of. Uh... Uh, I think, I think the hard thing I try, I try and describe this, uh, I learned this really young. It really sucks to wear the white belt. And if you got the black belt in something, it like, it is a miserable experience to hop over to another dojo with a different martial art and wear a white belt and just like, man, I could kick butt. If we were at yeah, this yeah. sort of thing. And like, yeah. if you have a riff or lick that works, it's so yeah. hard to sit down sometimes and work out a new one when you know the old one works real nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah oh, so, absolutely. So it is hard. Absolutely. And and in a turnaround, those chords move. Yeah. They move. Yeah. So some so like I'm 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 sort of uh, almost apologizing for myself here. It's like, you know, I'll go I'll go through those changes just because they're they're wicked fast sometimes and it's like, yeah. oh, I'll just do the same thing, the same thing, because that's the only way yeah. I know. But yeah. like you said, if you're learning the phrasing, if you're if you're learning sort of like um, the language of of uh, this section of a blues, I don't even know if people have to think of it like a four chord or a five chord. It's just like, here's a riff, here's a riff. This is the feel, this is the feel, or this is a call, this is a response, and here's them flipped yeah. and all that sort of stuff. Um, it doesn't have to be like uh, example 1A. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> you know? exactly. And then you're like, okay, at, you know, 108 beats per minute? Sure, no problem yeah. kind yeah, of yeah. thing. Uh, laser precision, yeah, kind, kind of. <laughs> um, well, I mean, timing is important, but it is not that important. Yeah, but um, like, I I think that's another cool thing, though. Like when you were showing me some of those riffs, it's like there there there's there's cool notes here, and you're gonna miss them if you yeah. if you just shift and do the same yeah. thing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. and like there. Um, there is a feeling in a four chord, like there's something different. And if you go over there and yell the same thing, yeah, it is kind of like, and if we're going to call it a call or a response, it doesn't matter, I guess. But like, and then you're calling over there and calling over there. It's almost like, I kind of get that. I kind of get what yeah, you're yeah. saying. Like, yeah, it's more like sort of bring it back to, uh, you know, learning that language or listening, like listening, I think is so important instead of just, uh, I mean, even learning the riff from someone is is mm-hmm. also important for sure. But instead of it being like a figure A, like here are the seven licks you can swear by sort yeah. of thing. Like, I think yeah. that's a good, it's probably a good start. But for me, like what you said where it was like, this one feels uh, hopeful and this one feels yeah. like that to me is more like, you know, now I want to go on a search. 
I want to yeah. I want to listen to these artists and see where they sort of take me and figure them out that way. Um, yeah. Yeah. So when a uh, quick, quick question, uh, I know we got to wrap up soon, but when you learned those licks, OK, so say you learn a lick. If you're just, say, doing it by ear, how how did you arrive on it's in this scale versus it's in or this box versus in this box versus in this box? Or do you just sort of stumble you through mean using the exact same notes? Same yeah. Sound? Yeah. That's a good question, man. Um, this comes down to listening again. And, and you I mean, it's the only thing I had. Right. I didn't have YouTube. I didn't. Yeah. Have, I didn't have a teacher. I didn't have any of that. So. Um, so here's the way. I arrived at that conclusion. I basically had to keep trying and trying. I won't use that riff there. Or actually, no, I, I will. Okay. So this riff here, you know, yep. right? Uh, what would it be here? Yeah. Yeah. Now, immediately, I know that's not an E string. It's it's too creamy. Yeah. And it's too um, full and and sure. I don't know how to explain it. Uh, it's a it's tone too thing. Creamy and, and yeah. yeah, it's a tone thing. Where is it? Yeah. Like that, <laughs> it's, you it's can snappy. hear the string snapping yeah. back, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah. And that's that's how I did it because, um, especially BB King, man. I mean, like a lot of the time, I'll flip down to my um, my uh, treble pickup here. Sure. You know, he he played opening like <laughs> right. There are a lot of times where he went, and I know it's there, and I know it's not here. Right. And vice versa, because I hear him do it here. Again, you hear the sound of it. And I'll give one more example of that. The first time I ever heard the song Hideaway, mm -hmm. it was by, which is the most famous blues instrumental ever. Mm -hmm. It was by Jeff Healy. And it sounds oh, yeah. like this. Right? And right. when I heard the original, it sounded like this. Oh. And so that was a big eye opener for me on tone and yeah. like what what's you know where is that being played on the guitar well you really have to just listen and and trust your ear on, on sure that, you know yeah 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 there's such a subtlety to that and it's 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 really really cool like if you want to do a deep dive on something like you know you can really sort of venture through that yeah, uh, for sure. And I think that comes with experience too of, of just learning a variety of riffs across the fretboard because as you learn them, you're they're, they are going into your ear and you're thinking about the tonality of it. And but but nothing nothing is a substitute for listening. Um, right. And kind of another disclaimer I'll say here, since I know other people will be watching this, if you're going to learn blues, I beg of you to either learn it from someone who has played a lot of blues and studied it or just forget about all the online uh youtube educational things blah 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 by by rock guitar players who are fantastic guitar players studio musicians mm. they haven't studied it just go and watch bb king go mm. and watch albert go and watch hubert someone look at their hands try to figure out what they're doing um you know even bb and, and albert collins and some of those guys had educational videos um and and watch those because that's where you you're really going to understand it from the right source. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, here I am, a skinny white kid from Canada, <laughs> saying, to "Learn it from people who know." Yeah. And I mean, I know a lot of this because I've done it myself, and there are a lot of great white guitar players that have done the same thing. Sure. Uh, Stevie Ray and Jimmy Vaughn included, and, yeah. and you know all those guys. Um, but it, it's super important that if you're going to learn learn a genre, to like learn it. You know. Yeah. Um, and like learn it sort of uh, from native speakers or people who are really mm -hmm. close mm -hmm. to it. Yeah. But but you're but right. Then, like like a, a rock guitar player or a metal guitar player, like sure I know the scales. I'll break it mm -hmm. down for you. But like yeah. to actually and I, I said it right out of the gate. It's like the actual vibe. I know. I know. I've seen I've seen these people play. It's like no, nah, I can't. I can't do that. I can tell you exactly what he's doing. But I can't do it. <laughs> well, I don't think you're giving yourself enough credit. No, I, no, no, I fair. Could do it. I think you could do it. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, different strokes for different folks, right? I mean, yeah. Like, uh, I, I would, I would give. Uh, what what hand, what finger do I not use that often? <laughs> I, I would give my ring finger on my right hand to have the knowledge that you have sure. of the fretboard, of scales, and and things like that. Um, sure. So there, there's such benefit to learning it, Definitely. learning guitar from a 
great guitar player like yourself and a great teacher like yourself. Um, and that's like 98% of the guitar world. Yeah. But the other 2% who really, really care about learning blues specifically yeah learn it properly you know what i mean yeah that i mean that's true i mean the the, the other thing i think about though and and I'll, I'll i'll sort of leave you with with this thought and see what you think but like i always say that um like a singer is the hard line connection to the audience right yeah and if we were to talk like lead guitar or guitar in general as some form of hard line connection to the audience i think connecting to them on like a like a blues line is 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 almost like you can hear a singer oh, riffing, yeah. riffing on it right and oh, yeah, and, totally. and me blasting arpeggios at whatever uh i you know i'm not going to do it so i'm gonna i'm gonna to, i'm just gonna toot my fake horn and say like 30 second notes at whatever right like it's just like wild yeah, fast it's on. like <laughs> no, <laughs> i can't do oh, it I, no i can't do it i've i'm so out of shape i can't do any of that stuff um yeah. but uh like that <sighs> That's more like this uh, Olympian kind of, ooh, impressive. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, and it's, yeah, totally. it almost stops there. Do you know what I mean? It's like um, my vibe in the audience, and this is maybe different for everyone else, but my vibe in the audience is I go to one of those guitar players and I look around and everyone's got their arms folded. Mm -hmm. And they're just studying, like, if I can do better than that or if... Yeah. Like and and there are connections. There's some really good guitar players. Like, don't get me wrong, oh, I yeah. love that kind oh, of music. Absolutely. But, <laughs> like, if I'm talking about just like a general thing, I think that hard line connection to an audience is like, it's 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 more of that um, emotive kind of yeah. almost vocal kind of connection. Some oh, yeah. something that you can translate your language to. And maybe, yes. oh, yeah. maybe in like some crazy Aldemiola run, mm -hmm. you could feel sorrow or something for yeah. sure. But it's oh, yeah. very nuanced. And like, yeah. but like when you hit a note like that, say over a four chord, it's like, oh no! In ninety percent of that audience, they know they know what you're talking about. They not only yeah, that, sure. they yeah, they feel it. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, we have to remember that blues comes from black people mm -hmm. in the South in the U.S. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is where it comes from, and it didn't start out as guitar players. It started as singers. They were singing in the, in the fields. They yep. were the field haulers, the, yep. you know, singing back and forth at each other. And, mm -hmm. and then that translated into instrumentation and, and playing it on a guitar or a harmonica or a saxophone or whatever. Mm -hmm. And if it wasn't for those black people and their sacrifices, we would have nothing musically. Like we would have classical music and that's it. You know what I mean? Yep. We wouldn't have blues, jazz, rock and roll, um, even up to hip hop and rap. I mean, sure. it just wouldn't exist. So uh, we all have to remember where it came from. Um, as Willie Dixon said, the blues are the roots, the rest are the fruits. <laughs> and, and that's the best like way that. to think about it. I like um, that. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and guitar players like B.B. King, the way they sang was, or the way they played guitar is just an extension of the way they sing. Right. And so you're absolutely right. The difference is uh, a blues guitar player or, or a, a non-blues guitar player playing a blues riff is is speaking from the heart and from emotion and mm -hmm. the guitar players who are you know eddie van halen fast and and um steve Vai and those guys i mean yeah. they are incredible guitar players yeah. we're not going to take anything from those guys as, as um and their prowess and their talent and and their precision and like oh it's unbelievable um and maybe their audience goes to the goes to the shows and and leaves with their heart bursting maybe not i don't know yeah um but like you said, man, there's a huge difference between uh, speaking to your audience on a technical standpoint or from a technical standpoint and from a uh, emotional standpoint from the heart and, and putting your heart on your sleeve through your instrument. And just, you know, it, there's something for everybody, right? I mean, you, you look sure. at those big um, uh, G3 concerts and things like that. Um, <laughs> I was in L.A. Uh, was it a year ago? No, two years ago, I guess. Yeah. And I met Zach Wild and oh, Steve wow. Vai. And I was at a, at a rehearsal watching those guys rehearse. It was yeah. like insane, man. It's the best, some of the best guitar players in the world. Yeah. And I was the only outsider there because a friend of mine worked with them. And uh, and I watched these guys and I, my mind was blown, man. Totally <laughs> blown. And then they go out on tour and sell out 2,000 seat yeah. uh, theaters like night after night. So yep. people obviously love that. Oh, for sure. Um, and so there's no doubt about that, but uh, yeah, different worlds, man. I mean, there's something for everybody, right? Yeah, no, definitely. Um, I, I I agree with you entirely. Like, and the, the last time I saw Steve Vai, which was like 
2004 or 2005. He played with Ingve Malmsteen. It was a G3. Uh, yeah, he was and, there at the rehearsal. Oh, Malmsteen was? Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> I'll tell oh. you that story off, off camera. Yeah, fair, fair. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, like there was some very emotional parts in that, but I, yeah. you know, it, 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 like looking at it from like a student's perspective, like, like, and I mean, we're all learning this sort of stuff, but like, uh, tackling something Steve Vai, it's hard to not get distracted by like the, the mountain of technique that that man oh, has yeah. and not just look at, you know, his, his voice. If that makes sense, because he has a he has a voice in there too. Like it's really really cool, and some of his super slow stuff, you get a chance to actually hear it a little bit better because it's yeah, slow enough yeah. for me to figure well, it out. He's a soulful guy, no doubt. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But I think I think it's like like leaving this lesson, like some of the riffs you showed me, and just listening. Like that's a huge thing. Just listening. It's like <laughs> it's like hey, if you wanna if you wanna paint a sunset, here here's the seven steps for it. Well, no, maybe you should look at a sunset a couple times. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right, man. Good one. You have all these great comparisons. That's awesome. But but it it's sort of inspiring me to you know I'm gonna go check out some of these artists with a little bit more uh, detail and a little bit more uh, energy. Um, yeah. And and you know sort of pluck out those those riffs and 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 not really um, I don't know iron them out and be like too technical about it because yeah. from what I'm yeah. hearing. And the you know the vibe I was getting is it's like, man, I could totally do this. I just gotta sit and talk. I gotta yeah, I, I gotta yeah, speak man. this blues language. I don't have to sit here yeah. and study before I go and talk. Right. I just exactly, need to have exactly. a conversation. Yes. Right. Yeah. And 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 start and, to learn the words, the language. Yeah. And next so. time we'll we'll go over a couple of those other boxes and and develop some more of the guitar playing side because I think we covered a lot here today. Yeah. With discussing it and and this kind of thing i think helps students a lot more than actually playing the guitar mm -hmm. because these conversations make you think differently they make people think differently about the instrument and you know there are, there are plenty of lessons i do where someone will come over back when we were allowed to be near each other mm -hmm. and uh and we would talk for an hour and they would leave and i'd be like man we didn't play any guitar and they're like it doesn't matter i learned so much today yeah the guitar is secondary to understanding where it comes from and and how to apply it yeah um, and, and i think that's super important too no i agree it's lessons like this that you know uh they 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 kind of give days weeks months years later for a student um yeah. because because what you're doing is like you're, you're you're helping forge that connection and and develop that connection to that style of music a little stronger and it's not just like here's the phrase you say you know like yeah. like you're reading a uh, a language book you're just about to land and you need to go to the bathroom and you just like say the line <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, right, that's right. <laughs> right so talking like this it's like it's kind of you know you're getting a more enrichment uh or enriching experience uh with that language yeah. and and, yeah. and how to connect so no i i really appreciate it yeah so. thank you man i appreciate it too. <laughs> well thanks so much for the lesson well, I don't know if I don't know if it was a lesson, but it was oh, a good conversation. No, it definitely was for me a hundred percent a lesson. I think I think the uh, I, the mark for me of a good teacher is just how you can resonate with a student and sort of use their energy. It's like the tai chi of uh, of yeah. uh, you know you got to use their energy to yeah. get them where they they need to go. And I and yeah. I, I I certainly feel like you you tackled that for sure. Awesome! Thank you so much. Thank you.